Thanks. Hi everyone, um, Cormac here from Energy Co-ops Ireland. Uh, we set ourselves up about three years ago, and effectively to date we now have five co-ops around the country. Uh, we are a co-op ourselves. Um, we've got we set up the first one on the Iron Islands, who you may be familiar with. Um, I know Aileen is going over in I think Sunday for a few days. I'll go on to that in a second. So we have uh, outside of Dublin, we've got the Iron Islands, we've got Claremont, we have Ballymann, and we've got Tralee. And the whole idea behind this is to try and get a vehicle. So everything that's being said up to now is fantastic. But to take this a step further, you have got to have some sort of vehicle that you can, as a community, you can get into and decide for yourselves what you're going to do. And um, you decide one area you would have certain resources, another area you would have different resources. So that's the first thing to do is to, to actually structure yourself in something that you're comfortable with. Um, and models in Europe are absolutely and playing a huge role. As of uh, the end of this month, we're hoping to be the, the Federation for Energy Cooperatives in Europe, representing Ireland. So in, in Europe, there are 310 energy cooperatives in this group, and they represent groups, small communities, medium-sized, and up to very large uh, communities on their own, uh, very large wind farms. So that's what we want to bring that, that type of model to Ireland. Um, so the best example I can give you is the Iron Islands. So three years ago, they set themselves up, and it just takes eight people. So we just look at eight people amongst ourselves and we say, right, okay, now we are going to begin this process of taking control into ourselves and seeing what we can do. So today, what the Iron Islands have achieved is uh, they looked at about five different possibilities in their area of what sort of technologies they could employ, what sort of community benefits they could generate, et cetera, et cetera. So they had a period of time of looking at what's available to them. And they actually decided at the end of it, to their surprise, some of the, the technologies weren't applicable to them that they thought they would actually have. So they said, right, okay, we're going to have to think differently. So what they did was they decided retrofitting is the, is the thing for them. The, the benefit of, of, of retrofitting is they had the SAI on their side. And the first year they put into the Better Energies Communities Program, they had 600,000 euros worth of retrofitting done on three islands. Um, that second year was something like 850, and last year was 1.4 million. By the year 2016 17, 100%, it is hoped, of the entire building stock on the three islands will be have retrofitted to a high uh, SEAI standard. That's 100% of the entire building stock. So when you're thinking about that, it's, it's a fantastic end result for eight people who come together to actually create an energy co-op three years ago. Very short space of time. So that's that's just plan B, and that's a rolling program. They're, what they're now looking at is the possibility of bringing a wind turbine to the island. Um, Beside the wind turbine, they will they will own this. So the co-op will own this this wind turbine. And beside that, they will have they have a sea salt manufacturer who will come to town and create eight to ten to twelve jobs, uh, permanent jobs that are anchored on the Aran Islands, and they will create the Aran Island sea salt brand that we sold internationally. Uh, besides that, you're going to have uh, a distillery uh, and a brewery. And you can imagine, you can think of putting in being sold as a brand via the Iron Islands around the world. So it's a, they have a huge market for something like that. And then the third thing that they want to do is uh, grow food on the island that's, um, in poly tunnels, etc. Because normally all the food has to be brought in every day. So, 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 you know, it's, the islands are just rock, essentially. So, that's what they want to do. And they're taking control of their own resources in their area. And this is going to take time. So the turbine has local issues, planning, etc., etc. So it's not a walk in the park. 
but that's that's the plan. Uh, so it's demonstrating if you create a vehicle that people can understand. So they get support from Galway uh, County Council. They got support from the SEAI. Uh, Dara was up at the, at the award ceremony. They got, they got the award, best community awards from the SEAI last year. Um, he's been up presenting to, to the department with ourselves, uh, the Department of Energy in Dublin. And that's the kind of credibility that he, they have built up is because of that they're in a recognized vehicle. So it means that in a very short space of time, this community could actually have an energy cooperative formed by getting eight people in willing to actually take this forward. And going back to what you were saying earlier about getting a project, you need to get a project that the community is happy with to move forward into. What you do not want to do is create something that people will just talk and talk and talk and talk. It needs to be structured. And our best advice would be to get somebody very strong to be the chairman of that, that particular group and have a vision and have an easy win as, a, as your first project. So don't try and do the big project first, do the small one first and get credibility in your group, and get momentum in your group, etc. And the SEAI funded an awful lot of that work and will continue to fund that. We, Energy Cross Ireland, are trying to change the model of reliance on, on, on the SEAI totally, even though we know that they're, they're, they're great assistance. But they have a finite pot of money available to them for this type of work. Uh, our next co op is the one in Claire Morris, and that is taking the European model of the cooperative being formed and going into local partnership with the local council. So in this case, it's Mayo County Council. And it's joint venture. The idea behind it is that the co op will own and run their own digital heating scheme. And it will be run, it will be built over three phases. So the idea is that um, they've picked a small ish uh, loop to begin with, and it consists of the county council building, fire station, um, the national school, crossroad. Back across is um, 20 or 30 old age homes. Beside that is Tesco and swimming. And that's the loop that we created on the first phase of it. So in that, you've got community benefits. This is in relation to heat. So heat is generated into these premises and buildings, and there's savings to be made. The supply going in to create that heat is coming from biomass, which is outside the town, which is, is very nearby. So you're creating jobs that way. So the whole concept is you're, you're replacing fossil fuels, you are creating jobs locally, you're creating sustainability. Um, and this is in theory, so you're actually doing it in practice. But that's their first project, and we're looking to actually take that model and roll it out around the country to different uh, councils around the country as well. Um, so with that, you've got a community who are taking control and deciding on one project first, and then they can go on to do a whole variety of other things but they're doing it bit by bit by bit. So the next one we had was uh, is in Ballyman in, in County Longford. And that group is also made up of individuals, politicians, local councillors, uh, business people. So it's to all these things are totally representative of the area that you're living in. So they are the community. But in this Ballyman uh, example, you may have read about two weeks before, sorry, two months ago, um, centre parks from the UK are coming over, and it's 100 million worth of, of uh, development in the middle of a forest. One of the big problems that they had, they have four sites in the UK, but their last site in the UK actually had a, a series of problems, and they recognised that, listen, if you don't have the local community as part of your development, you're going to walk into all sorts of problems. So as an example, they've already met with Centre Parks twice, uh, this energy co-op, and the idea behind it would be that they would take the waste, which would be an enormous issue for the planning of that project, from Centre Parks, 
and use it for a dissertation scheme in the town. So you're beginning to see that, that the cooperative is interacting with uh, local business, uh, businesses that can come in that you can attract into the area, and you're, both sides are helping each other, and you're creating in the process uh, real jobs, sustainability, and all the things that we're actually looking to, to create that we talk about. But you've got to have the vehicle first. Um, and if you're happy with the idea of a cooperative, a cooperative is one member, one vote. Um, you, you do need certain skills within the group, and we will we'll advise you specifically on what type of skills you need. Uh, you need to be formed uh, legally in the CRO. All this can be done in, in a week, 10 days. So it's, it's very doable. It's deciding to do it is, is the key. Um, I go on to lots and lots of different things. So I think that's that's just giving you a flavour of it. And just to say that we're bringing the, the, the minister, um, Alex White, the energy minister, over to the Iron Islands on the 29th of July. And anybody here who is just interested in isn't going with Aideen uh, on Sunday would be more than welcome to come to that. There will be a series of announcements being made um, on the day by the SEAI, by ourselves, by the Energy Co-op. And it's just in the white paper coming out in September, there is, we are told there's going to be pieces of good uh, news for communities in terms of following hopefully the Scottish model in terms of a shared ownership. Uh, it's a long story, but that's something that we would love to see happening. And uh, we were told uh, confidentially that that's hopefully going to be in this point paper. So that's hopefully positive. So there's that, and um, that's pretty much it, what I have to say, I think. Thank you very much.